Corporate media doesn't really care about being inclusive. It just wants to make more money. How many of you have noticed that it seems like when you click on a streaming service in the last few years, you are just sort of like constantly inundated with political messaging? I'm Basic Blue. Thank you for clicking on my video. Uh, in this podcast, in this channel, I like to talk about politics and religion and you know, it's just the climate that we find ourselves in currently. Who knows? Maybe in a couple of years, I'll look back and say, oh, I'm glad those days are over. Or it's going to get worse. All right. Paramount just uh, tweeted uh, just recently, we need a deeper, more quantifiable understanding of how to harness the power of storytelling to challenge stereotypes, shift perceptions and create meaningful change. Well, that sounds great, doesn't it? It sounds great. It Here's the thing that's kind of funny about that. You see the picture, and then right away you know what they mean. It's not like you see, um, I don't know, Democrats on the one side and Republicans on the other and say, we're going to create content that brings, you know, the two sides together. No, what this actually says is we're going to go all the way on the one side and you're just going to be okay with it. Let's, let's click on that for some clarification. Paramount's content for change hopes to impact the industry. Uh, I would say that um, they've already done this. Uh, if you've subscribed to Paramount Plus in the past um, year or so, the first one that comes to mind, maybe you guys can chip in on other shows that you've seen that they're also doing this with, is Star Trek Discovery, uh, Star Trek Picard, uh, I think the Lower Decks was another one. Each one of those follows this. In other words, if you find yourself consuming that content and you're like, this seems a lot like um, the same messaging that I'm seeing in Netflix, the same messaging that I'm seeing in uh, Disney. You know, they're another company that have, have been uh, pushing this sort of woke content being woven into it. It's very strange to me when people react to content that is overtly Christian <laughs> and they're like, I don't want to watch this. And yet at the same time, we're all supposed to accept uh, something else being woven into our media. And I mean, it used to be kind of underneath the radar and it seems like it's being really like, ur, like pushed right on you now. Uh, and it's not a coincidence, you know, I said this before on my channel, in the wake of uh, what happened in 2020, uh, as this article kind of leads into, all of that stuff that the racial riots was used as like a Trojan horse to implement things that are based essentially in, in Marxist ideology. All right, It's not that hard to find, and the reason why I say this over and over and again in every one of my videos just about is that I believe it is important to raise awareness about things that I think are affecting our society. It does not come from a bad place. It comes from a concerned place. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay, that's a term that has been hijacked. It's been crafted from CRT to just sound a little bit more palatable. The people that hear this video and they're laughing, like, no, it's not the same, not the same. Look, I live in one of the states that's been pushing this like real hardcore. I've read about it. I've, I've read like state sponsored articles about this stuff. Basically, when they say these three terms, it means like kind of the opposite, right? Diversity essentially means that they want right, everybody to fit within this parameter here. Okay. But that does not include political diversity. It does not include religious diversity. It only seems to suggest that the people that fit within this, this is a great picture, by the way, only people that fit inside this inner box count for diversity. And it, it, here's another thing that might blow your mind. I just want you to look at this picture for a second and say, it, you think this is a stupid video. What is he even talking about? Just consider when you look at that picture, if you think visually, well, that that looks, yeah, that's diverse. I, it, everybody's like, you know, there's different colors there. You shouldn't care about what something looks like visually. You should not assume until you go and talk to each one of those people 
okay, that they're all that different. In other words, they might all lean a certain way politically. <gasps> Imagine that. Do you think when you go into that crowd, are you going to find any conservative or right-leaning people? So are you talking about diversity of external appearances, or are you talking about diversity of content of character? Because I think if you talk about content of character, you'll find that this movement wants anything but diversity. They want sameness up here. All right. Fall in line, sit down, and shut up and listen. You're not allowed to talk. All right, we're gonna. <laughs> I'm I'm mimicking I'm mimicking them. If you guys want to leave a comment, you can. I'm just. If that sounds familiar, that's that's the party line. It's just I've seen that in other like school board meetings and stuff where they just shut down the just sit down and shut up. So, anyways, equity uh, goes back to the image of the fence, which I can bring that up real quick. Equity, three, kids, fence. Let's see if, if I can get lucky and it'll just come up without even planning it. There it is. <laughs> All right. This is what this movement kind of seems to indicate. This is an expansion of it. I like the liberation one where there's no fence, but I mean, how do you keep rodents from getting in? You know, there's a fence for a reason, not just to like keep people from seeing the game. <laughs> it's from, I mean, why would you stand out here in, if you didn't have a fence, why would you pay for those seats? <laughs> so, right away, you can break down this logic pretty quickly if you just think about it in real life, okay? Now, equality says, oh, that's not enough. Those three boxes there, th those are fine. Or, oh, wait a minute. No, the short kid can't see. So we need to give more resources to the kid that's short. There's, there's two things I can say about that. I, mean, I want to believe that this kid right here could be the next Damon John, you know, of Shark Tank. All right. Four billion dollar uh, CEO of FUBU, if you're not familiar. All right. He's very short, you know, and he, he doesn't enjoy any sort of privileges, apparently, you know, if you pay attention to this stuff. Okay. So that's why I bring that guy up. Do you think Damon John would require uh, boxes given to him? Or do you think maybe he'd figure out a way? Okay. Maybe he would grab some boxes from an old storage center or something or a, or a junkyard, paint them a bunch of colors and sell them to the other kids. I mean, you haven't really thought about that when you guys make this argument that, well, we need equity. I mean, look at why would you not want to at least progress to the second picture there when the first picture, the, the short kid still can't see the game. Well, maybe the short kid is really smart. And he can talk to the kid with the tallness to get on his shoulders. Say, I'll do your homework for tonight if you let me on your shoulders. That's one solution. Uh, maybe this kid, in an entrepreneurial-like fashion, notices that uh, candy bars are, you know, $3 here at the game because of inflation, but they're only a buck fifty down at the local uh, gas station. So he goes and buys a bunch of candy bars, comes back, sells them for two fifty. you know, undercuts... The concession stand and then he gets enough money to you know buy a ticket so now these two kids are left out there and the one that's the shortest is now sitting in the seats okay but your idea of liberation means you've taken away any incentive for that smart little kid to go and want to sit in the good seats so if you don't understand why the second word is particularly uh, damaging and why it would actually lead to less variety in life you need to understand that not everybody goes to a baseball game and and has this dilemma for one thing it's an oversimplification of our society <laughs> and it also assumes that individuals will never be able to think of a way out of their situation other than just give me some some boxes and we should I think everybody with half a brain can figure out what those boxes are. They're like tax dollars that we redistribute, you know, to certain people that are decreed more needy than others. That is a way to communism, all right? That defeats ingenuity. If you just give people the boxes, they're not going to have to figure out how to get by. If you gave me a free check every month, do you think I would be sitting here doing this content like aggressively like this? Or do you think I would just sit back and say, well, it's not fair. I don't have enough time. People better give me some boxes too. So I need all this. No. Okay, don't assume that I don't have a fence in front of me right now that I'm trying to climb over myself. You don't think it's hard? 
All right, take away your, your racism and your sexism and whatever other isms and don't bring them to my channel, okay? <laughs> because I can explain away this junk in, in, you know, the few minutes that I, you know, demand of your time when you click on one of my videos. It's not hard to come up with other explanations on how society can solve this without somehow shifting things arbitrarily and say, well, we need to just, that short person... Most of the need from Marxism isn't even derived from physical differences. You know, I, I don't see society saying that we need to um, make sure that all people with cerebral palsy don't ever have to go into another supermarket. You know, we're going to lower all the shelves to like two feet tall because we can all bend over, right? So my friend that I've had for over 15 years that has cerebral palsy, you know, are you leftists sticking up for him? Are you going around saying, well, look at this. I mean, if all the supermarket shelves are four and five feet tall, we should just have them all lowered. Because 0.00001 of the population is somehow, you know, affected in that way. No. All right. I'm sorry if that's harsh, but there's a, such a thing as called majority rule. All right. And if you let majority rule in this sort of thinking, that will lead to bad things. All right. America's self-obsession is killing its democracy. That I actually agree with, even though it's from The Atlantic, which is known to be kind of left-leaning. Basically, I bring this article up uh, because it highlights... I'm not going to like read all of it, but if you've noticed, uh, it seems like our left-leaning press seems to continuously say, like, oh, our democracy is in trouble. It's in trouble. It's in trouble. And who's the culprit? Well, it's Republicans. If we can just get them out of office. Uh, I'm sorry, but I thought you guys wanted to be inclusive. Okay. Now, if you're not going to be inclusive to, I don't know, 50% of the country, and you're going to claim that the other side is somehow reducing democracy, you're claiming to be inclusive while excluding like literally like about half the country <laughs> so what is it that you're even being inclusive about okay i'm calling it out as a lie you're essentially trying to get people to agree to a political movement like a trojan horse sort of thing and then you're also implying that if people disagree with that movement that somehow they are part of the problem okay that is a way of waging war <laughs> a psychological war a, a social war amongst you know, people that are over here, right? And now people are over here. So it, if you miss the days where we were closer together, all right, this sort of movement that has just recently happened within the couple few years from 2020, you got to start to learn ways to like logically uh, debate people on this. That's the only thing I can think of why I'm bring up that example and i'm trying to give you guys some fuel so you can put it in your own tank and when somebody brings up that example it'd be like look you're assuming that the short person has no brains you know that's that's kind of insulting like it, apparently all short people are just not you know they don't have an ingenuity at all so you should just assume next time you see somebody that's shorter than you oh, they need more help i mean what if they come across the fence you know are, are they going to be smart enough to figure out how to get around it that's all i got for this one what did you guys think of uh, what i brought up here do you think it's was i too vague you know did i try to make a mountain out of a molehill sometimes i do that but paramount is just you know it's another example you could bring up disney plus you could bring up uh, netflix you could even bring up hulu which is associated with disney i think at the moment uh, all of these organizations seem to want to pull this stuff, and I think there's very few people that are actually talking about it in a critical manner, you know, not just, oh, okay, okay, no, let's, if you want to do something, you know, think about something critical, let's think about the things that have happened over the past couple years and critically analyze them to see if they're good for our society or if they're not so good, you know? Let me know in the comments what you think about this. As always, press the like button and the subscribe button and the notification bell. I know it's a lot of it's a lot of work. Every every video, I'm asking people to do that. But little by little, we'll build our uh, our basic army or whatever you want to call this, the club. I'm Basic Blue, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.